Hello and welcome to the Big H Podcast. My name's Mike Hides and I'll be your host. It is Kibitzin with Ken Freeman today. Ken, it's great to have you along. Well, well, you finally got me here. I got you here <laughs> and you can't live without singing Hilton's praises. Uh, yeah. you, we usually start off with a little bit of information about your biogra- biographical information, but let us uh, know a little bit about what's life like today in the life of Ken Freeman. Pretty boring. Pretty boring? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty boring. Yeah, I'm, I'm retired. Uh, I'm the curator at the uh, the Parma Hilton Historical Society Museum, and so that at least gets me out of the house two afternoons a week, you know, plus other times that I do tinkering around building things for the displays for and like and you know, down in the basement. But uh, you know, and other than that, you know, it's a it's a pretty boring life. Pretty boring life. Um, explain to our audience a little bit what what the title of curator curator encompasses and what your responsibilities are. Um, I'm the one that uh, takes care of the whole building and the collection in the building. Um, you know, making sure that things are clean and nothing's disappeared. Uh, I build. I think up and build new displays for the for the museum, and uh, generally try to drive the uh, the docents crazy. <laughs> So what are some of the most recent memorabilia that you've collected over there at the museum? Uh, recently, we got a sign from Dr. Blodgett, who was uh, one of the two doctors when I was growing up as a kid um, in the village of Hilton. Um, his office at, when I was growing, when I was like in my early teens was on uh, Hazen Street, right, right next door to my grandmother's house. Okay. And um, my aunt was his secretary, too. So, you know, she would come over and kind of make sure that my grandmother and grandfather were still okay. So, you know, but that was cool, you know. Now, the other day I was getting in contact with you and you are doing a display for the window. Tell us a little bit about that window display you're working on. Okay, we did a, this time in the town hall, we did a display on... Uh, as a replica, replica, replication of um, the Jenny Goodnow uh, millinery shop in the village of Hilton, which was on East Avenue where the computer store is now. Uh, that building is over 100 years old. Mm-hmm. And the idea, it, it came out, the, the idea came out, I, I found a, uh, an entire cedar chest full of hats just tucked away in the bottom of the cedar chest that, and, that were out there in the gallery and said hmm, it was a, be a pretty neat idea for mm-hmm. a display so there's ladies hats and then we also expanded it into men's hats because we found a really really nice silk top hat from Klein hands of buffalo all in its hat box and everything like that the hat is in perfect shape mm-hmm which is it's amazing. So you got the hat display going on right now. Right. How long have you been a curator for the museum? Since uh, May of 2017. May of 2017? Yeah. And who was the curator prior to you? Uh, Ed Gable and Jim Stilson. And had you, was that the first year incorporation into the historical society or had you played other roles before that? No, no, that was, that was my first, uh, first interaction at all with the, uh, the historical society. Um, it was, and one of the um, funny story that, that came about with that is I was hanging out at Dave Crumb's office mm-hmm. on Wednesday nights in his little coffee class there. And, um, to use my best Dave from imitation one night i was i was sitting there talking to uh, chuck nichols and dave comes in and goes oh, ken can i talk to you in my office for a minute <laughs> it's like now hilton's a small town right you know so you know whatever goes on somebody's going to find out real mm-hmm. quick and it's like what did i do that i get in trouble for now you know i'm, I'm not that young anymore how can right. i how can i get in trouble you know uh, and he came into his office and 
Sedona here. It was like the, you know the stern father kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh no, what did I do? You know. <laughs> so he says, so we were talking the other day, and uh, your name came up. It's like, what? Yeah, and he says, uh, we're we're looking for a curator for the museum. It's like, oh, cool. You you interested? It's like, well, let me think about it. But in, in the back of my mind, right, it's like, yeah, why not? You know, mm-hmm. you know I had retired, you know, six months before, so mm-hmm. it was a good way to get out of the house, like I said <laughs> before, you know, because otherwise I'd just be sitting there building models or whatever else. You know? So Dave Crum, he's the president, um, or excuse me. He's the village of Parma, village of Hilton, town of Parma historian. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I guess, what are your responsibilities? I know how often we want to increase membership in the historic right. society. What's a way we can go about doing that? Um, Just word of mouth or? Well, you know, podcasts like this mm-hmm. are, are a good way to get the word out. You know, we're always looking for new members. Um, we'd like to get our demographics to be more to the younger crowd, you know, mm-hmm. and the, you know, like you, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you know, what are you, 50? 50? 55, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, just so that, uh, you know, we get, uh, younger blood in there to, uh, to continue the historical society as we go along. I mean, Hilton is so rich, rich in history. And I, I joined oh, yeah. as a member a couple of years ago and then I branched off and started doing these podcasts, but it, there's so much that you can glean just going down Main Street yeah. that you could fill a whole history class oh, in yeah. the middle school yeah. about. Yeah. Well, Parma Center as well. Right. Because you know, Parma Center was, as Shirley Houston put in her book, it was the hub of the universe. Mm-hmm. You know, and it really was. And, you know, because Parma Center grew up before the village did, you know. And uh, that was like. Atchison came here in 1798 or something mm-hmm. like that, you know. I love to tell people that are visiting, you know, just, you know, picture what this had to have looked like because it was called the Black North, mm-hmm. you know. What did, uh, what do you think this looked like in 1798? Mm-hmm. You know? Because there weren't any open fields here. This mm-hmm. was all trees and dense forest. Um, with, and Hilton Parma Corners Road here was, Basically, just an Indian trail mm-hmm. from uh, from Ridge Road. Ridge Road was really the uh, the main drag to uh, from you know to to Buffalo mm-hmm. or to Niagara Falls, actually. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I read once. I got, I got a couple of books now, um, and I think they said oh, it was a one foot wide trail mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, picture picture you know a whole family because uh, when. When Atchison came here, he had his wife and his two sons with him and everything like that, and all their all their possessions, and they were obviously in a wagon or something like mm-hmm. that, probably towed by either a, probably an ox or something like that, you know. And they're so they're having to hack away trails to just get up here to where their where their homestead would would be. And where was that homestead? Um, it's over you go down Hill Road, mm-hmm. and you make the curve, and you go down through that gully there. Yep. Um, it's right there, where the, right in that area where the cemetery is now. And that's the Etch- Etchison? That's Sorry. the Etchison Cemetery. It's one of our six pioneer cemeteries. Six pioneer cemeteries? Well, I, I'm just going to keep going along with what you said. Do you remember the other five pioneer cemeteries or the, the yeah. other families? Yeah, there's the Wright Dunbar Cemetery mm-hmm. down at the corner of uh, North Avenue and Dunbar Road. Mm-hmm. And there's the Wright Cemetery. Um, I think I said that. There, no, I'm sorry. It's the Smith Dunbar Cemetery. Okay. Um, the Wright Cemetery over the corner of Dunbar and Town Line Road. There's the uh, Knapp Cemetery, Sage Knapp Cemetery on Town Line, south of Parma Center Road. Castle Cemetery, which is right up over here, across from the VFW on Peck Road. And then Husik up at the corner of Manitou and Ridge. Later on in the in the year, I'm going to have Tom Berger on for a podcast, and I mm-hmm. want to really explore cemeteries and, and yeah. things like that with him. Yeah. Um, we're going to go back in a little bit now and go into a little bit about your family's history. Uh, you Talk to me a little bit about your parents, where you were born, when you were born, and a little bit about that early life of Ken Freeman. Well, 
I was born here in Parma. I'm, I'm born in Parma. Um, grew up uh, on West Avenue in Hilton. Just past the uh, what's now what you would call the Quest School. Mm -hmm. From when I was growing up, that was the high school. Okay. Uh, it was a quarter of a mile from the school, so you know I always walked to school. Mm -hmm. uh, um, my dad's side of the family, he was from down southern tier, down around Wellsville, Bolivar area. My mom, her whole family settled Parma Center, or were early family of Parma Center. Um, my, uh, my triple great grandfather uh, moved here in like 1813, somewhere in there. Okay. He built right there, or he bought a house from Roswell at Atchison, right there at the corner of Parma Center, and built Parma Corners Road, where the trans where the transmission shop is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they expanded that house over the years. But actually, my mother's side of the family, three of my great great grandfathers, all were right there in the Parma Center. Mm -hmm. um, there was um, Chauncey Knox, who's on Parma Center down by the meeting house, and um, William Newton. William Newton, he was the uh, the the newcomer of it, as it were, because he came here in like 1845. So there, and he was where the monument shop is now. Mm -hmm. um, that was their first house that they built. That house that was there uh, it was started out probably as like a four room rubble stone log house or something mm -hmm. like that, and it expanded into a huge house because at one time it actually housed three different families okay with, you know uh, be my great great grandmother my great grandmother and my grandparents were all there at the, all same, there at the time. same time yeah and yeah, they all had their separate little place parts of the house what did your mom and dad do for occupations my dad worked at kodak um plus he did little side jobs he was a uh, during the summer, he earned, especially in the spring, he had a he had a Ford eight end tractor, and he would go and plow and just gardens for the locals here. Mm -hmm. and I was thinking about that when I was coming over here today. This, this is about the time of the year that the phone would start ringing back in the sixties, and you know the people, his regulars that would that wanted to have uh, their gardens done, you know, and he'd go off, you know, around the end of May and. Uh, plow gardens and disc them up every day and mm -hmm. there's probably 20 25 different people that were regulars mm -hmm. just, and you know in the 60s everybody around here had a, had a vegetable garden so, right you know nowadays yeah some do some don't and how about what was your mom's maiden name and what did she do she was an odell okay um and she worked for well, let's see from 1964 Four sixty-five somewhere in there until she was 88 or 89. She worked for Hamilton Manor Nursing Home. Okay. And we kind of joked that she finally ended up uh, retiring from there because uh, she was older than some of the residents, and a lot of the new aides would think that she was just one of the, the residents <laughs> that was running around there. She, but she did laundry there. Uh -huh. and she started up as a, as a part-time cook, and then somehow trans uh, shifted into doing laundry and the like probably because she couldn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> but she worked there you said till eighty nine years of age? Yeah. Yeah. And right then how long did she survive? Um she was almost ninety two when she died. Okay. And that was ooh, five years ago. Five years no, ago. No, it was more than five. It was like twenty fifteen, I think. Okay. Sixteen, somewhere in there. Yeah. And you said dad worked at Kodak, right. did some work with vegetable gardens and plowing. How, 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 what time did he, what year did he live to? Um, 89. 89? Yeah, he was just a month shy of his birthday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and did he, they live in that West, West Avenue house yeah. up until the date of their passing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And is that where you live now or where do you no, reside? No, no. I live over in Clarkson. Okay. Yeah, I, didn't want to have anything to do with the uh, with with their house. It was, it's it's really no bigger than the house I have now. Yeah, but it's different. Yeah, yeah. I just 
I wouldn't want to live that house. Okay. You know, the, the people that bought that house are, are pretty cool because uh, uh, the guy's wife is a, is a teacher. Uh, she teaches uh, art. I think I know the house you're talking about. Her last name Was is it Sears. It? Sears. Doesn't yeah. have an observatory out in the front yard? Or yeah. In a big red barn, I believe. Yep. Yeah. 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 Emily, great lady. Yeah. Great lady. Yeah. Um, you were an only child, is that correct? No, no, I had two sisters. Oh, you had two sisters. Okay. I had two sisters. What, what, what are old ages and what are they up to if they're my, still with us? My older sister, uh, she's, let's see, she was born 48, whatever that is. Um, she lives in West Virginia, mm-hmm. um, just south of uh, Hagerstown. And uh, my other sister, she was born 56. And she lives in Burke, West Virginia. Uh, Burke, Virginia. Okay. I almost put a West on there. But <laughs> over, over by, over by DC. Okay. She worked as a, uh, she worked for the federal government for 20 years in the federal court system. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the, and the sister that's in West Virginia, did she, was she employed ever? Or um, or? she, she, she went to college to be a school teacher and she actually taught at Northwood for like a year, I think, or something, and I got, got married and chased her Navy husband around the around the uh, the world right. for 20 years. And, okay. But she mostly worked things like um, bookstores and places like okay. that. You know. yeah. So that one that, what's her name? The one at West Virginia? She's in it. What's her Janice. name? Janice. Janice. And did she marry, obviously, and have, yeah. have children? or No. No. Kids. And yeah, then, neither one of them had kids. Okay. Yeah, none of us had kids. None of you had kids? No. Now, the one in West in Virginia, did she marry as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so there's 48, 56. What year were you born? 51. 51. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're in, you're in between, child? Yeah. Okay. yeah. What was that like being the, the only boy in the family? <laughs> I don't know if you got schooled by one or uh, schooled by at, both of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. You, you, you. Uh, I don't know. It yeah. was just. Yeah. It was one of those things that that, that was the way it was. You know, yeah. So, yeah. What was what was life like then growing up in Hilton? Let's, um, you know, like what you guys do for fun, or you know, I guess. The, the culture of Hilton in that time. Um, I know you graduated from Hilton in 1970. 69. Oh, 69? 69. Okay, then I looked at the wrong year. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, My yeah. face is in there. Uh, yes, it is. Um, I also <laughs> found out a couple of things about uh, you were in the rifle club. Is that true? That's right. right. And I also was on the golf team. In the golf. Now, that's interesting because I didn't think they had a golf team to as of recently, but tell us a little bit about that golf team and, you know, <laughs> Where'd you guys play your matches and things like that? Oh, boy, if you were yeah. good or were you a hack, I don't oh, know. Oh, I was a hack. Okay. I, I, I was number six on, the, on a five-man team. <laughs> <laughs> or was a five on a four-man team. Either, uh-huh. either way, but uh, yeah, um, uh, one of my best uh, lines that I love to use about playing golf is, uh, for me, it's like um, landscaping with the wrong tools. <laughs> um, yeah. Which course did you play? Uh, I think our home course was Grand Eastman. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the one that I remember we played at most. We played at, uh, we played, I think it was Reese or Ridgemont Country Club once, um, which was pretty neat. Uh, that's a heck of a course. And uh, I played nine holes, and I think my score was 72. Okay. So it's that's how. Huh? That's at Ridgemont? That's at, at okay. Ridgemont, yeah. That's, yeah. So it tells you how terrible I am. <laughs> yeah. I had a good short game, but I couldn't hit the ball long for anything. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know? Who was your coach? Mr. Orr. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think he might have been around when I started going to school. Probably was. was. he, do you know what he taught, what subject he was? He... God, I want to say science, but I, I could it was be. either science or social studies. Yeah. I don't recall for it, which I pull, up, I pull out the yearbook, I can find it out real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 He was uh, He was a good coach. Uh-huh. You know? Like, how do you coach golf? I mean, how do you coach? I mean, isn't it like you match him up? Oh, I got to keep your head down. 
What's it? What was it like? Uh, I don't remember a heck of a lot about it. <laughs> um, did you play just one year? Or did you play more years? Or... Um, I think I played two. Okay. But I don't recall for sure. Mm. Um, our team wasn't very good anyway. Mm. Um, I don't even remember who in the world else was on it mm-hmm. besides myself. Um, it's another one of those ones I'd have to look at the yearbook. Right. Yeah. You know. Would they um, did, would they bus you to these courses, or did you have um, to provide your own transportation? Uh, I think Mr. Orr took us all. I don't oh, remember yeah. how how Orley would have done that and throw five sets of golf clubs in the car, but you know. <laughs> and it might have been you might maybe somebody else drove too. I don't remember. You know. You know. Going to stretch your memory. How much was a round of nine holes if you had to go out and play? Back in those days, yeah. oh, it was cheap. Yeah. Um, Durand Eastman, I, I remember playing there a couple of times uh, with my friend Mike. Um, it's probably like $5 Five or bucks. something like that. Yeah. Maybe even less than that. Of course, that's a county course, too. Right. You know, so, yeah. Are county courses cheaper? They're cheaper than the private? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah municipals like that are, are always less money. I think now even, I haven't played golf in, 10 years, 12 mm-hmm. years, something like that. And uh, last time I played, I played at church well, and I think it was like $20. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so yeah, it's not a bad, not a bad deal, you know, right. if you consider that a, a country club is going to be at least double that. Right. Um, rifle club, right? You were in that? Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Cause it's gone by the wayside, but yeah. it's very yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's, that's, that's an interesting, uh, Interesting thing that you, you you think of now, you know, with you know you know guns and tools, it's just like no, this doesn't happen. Right. The rifle range, we it was a fifty foot range. The range is underneath the Henry Street School mm-hmm. in the uh, the sub basement there, and, and it's still there. Mm-hmm. Um, Amanda Dudley found it um, about a year ago, I think it was, and she they found how you get down there. I I kind of forgotten how in the world you got down to the range. Right. It was. Down through the, the boys' locker room in, mm-hmm. in the in there, and yeah, so it's it's all still there. the 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 tunnel is still there. But mm-hmm. Of course, all the other stuff is all gone, which is a shame. I'd like to know where in the world the rifles went to. What, what, were you a good shot? And I'm like, what was a match like? I assume other schools also had rifle clubs, or was it just a rifle club within the school of Hilton? It was just within the school um i know there were other schools that had rifle clubs at the time and they competed against each other but uh we never did um we just shot for score for ourselves mm-hmm. um i guess i was pretty good mm-hmm. you know, i got i've got nice patches that say that i was <laughs> you know, and it's translated over um i still shoot today in in a, in a league at the conservation club of rockport uh, yep. called sporter rifle it's the same basic format, only the only difference is, is where uh, junior, like when we were in school, it was you started out in the prone position shooting, and then after you advanced and got your all your badges from that, then you would then you would go to kneeling, and then you go to sitting, and and last would be offhand, and, and ne- we never got that far, or I never got that far, but. Uh, so it's still, still an interesting uh, hobby. And do you shoot primarily with pistol? Was it with rifle? Or is it's it a rifle. Both? Okay. Just strictly twenty two caliber rifle, mm-hmm. indoor, 50 foot. Mm-hmm. Uh, sporter rifle can be either open sight or scope. That was the, the difference also with, uh, with the rifle club because it, uh, it was iron sight. Mm-hmm. Um, Looking back on it, did a little research when I started with sporter rifle. The, uh, the rifles were really, really good. Um, um, they were basically a match rifle for the U.S. Army rifle team at one time. Okay. Or same idea. Right. Did you ever do any hunting with it or just sport shooting? I mean, not sport shooting. I would, I would, I would go out hunting in the fall when I was a kid. Because mm-hmm. you know, you could around here. You know, small game or small game, yeah. uh, mostly pheasant. I, mm-hmm. I would go for. Uh, I think I got one out of the whole time I would go out. 
Did you eat it or are you just kind of like? Uh, like we would eat them. Yeah. And, and what did they taste like? Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Don't they say that about everything? Yeah. Frog legs taste like chicken. Yeah. No, that's a basically what it is because it's just a. It's probably a. I don't remember anymore, but I would say it's, you know, maybe a little more because of the kind of things that a pheasant would eat that uh-huh. uh, maybe a little healthier for you. I right. don't know. You know but, How did you prepare it? Like, I'm obviously going to pluck the feathers. Was it, you know, cook on over a fire? I had an, if I got one, I would hand it to my dad and let him do it. <laughs> he knew how, because, you know, when he grew up in the, in the, 20s and 30s, you know, the, you know, he did a lot of hunting. Mm-hmm. I've, I've still got two of his shotguns from from when he was growing up. So, what was his first name? Franklin. Franklin. Um, going back to, I guess, Hilton. Talk a little bit about your elementary education. Do you remember that? Which which building you were in? Any of the teachers way back when? Oh, I was in every one of the. I was in every one of the school buildings that's around now. Until you get to uh, well, the the piece that's in there between um, Hazel Jenkins and Jonathan Underwood, mm-hmm. whatever they call that now, yep. I wasn't in there because that was built way after me. And of course, I wasn't in the new high school, mm-hmm. but every other school here I was in. Okay. Uh, what was Quest like when you were? Was that was it the high school at that, that time? That was the high school. Okay, ninth yeah. through twelfth, or um, it also had junior high. At, about the time that I was there too, they okay. were, and they were starting to build Mer- build Merton Williams about that same time. Okay, because I was I was the first class that went through Merton Williams. Okay, um, as, as an eighth grade class. Okay, and we actually did uh, half of the year we did over um, the high school because mm-hmm. it wasn't done yet. Even when we moved in, the uh, the pool and things like that weren't finished yet. So I don't know whether they ran out of money or whether they just you know took more time than what they thought. Right. Yeah, but... What was that like in terms of was it chaotic as a as a student? Like, like was it disjointed or did you guys handle it pretty good? I mean, this is the late sixties. We handled it pretty good. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was it was what it was. You mm-hmm. know. So yeah. yeah. Went to school and came home. <laughs> right. Yeah. Did you have any jobs you did during school, uh, during high school or middle school? I had a paper route. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I had a paper route with the Rochester Times Union mm-hmm. from, well, let's see, what was I? I think I started in eighth grade, maybe ninth, and went all the way through until I graduated. Mm-hmm. From a, I think thirty thirty five subscribers to seventy seventy five by the time mm-hmm. I got out of school. And you delivered from your bike, or did you do a walking route? Started out with my bicycle, and then when I got my learner's permit, then I started driving the car. And, right. You know, so you know it made it a lot easier because you know, papers get heavy after a while. Yeah, they you do. Know, even the afternoon paper, which was not anywhere near as big as the Democrat and Chronicle, is about mm-hmm. the size of what Democrat and Chronicle is now, mm-hmm. you know, which is nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, it was it was cool. It was cool. Yeah. Now in high school, I also I noted. Did you also be involved in the press club? Is that true? No. Okay. How about marching band? I was in marching band. Okay. What yeah. instrument did you play? I played saxophone. Okay. And I also was in the regular, the concert band. Um, that was, I, I guess that would have been my minor um, mm-hmm. when I was in school. Was, so, yeah, I played saxophone. Mm-hmm. And the marching band, you said too, right? Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because when I was looking at the yearbooks and stuff, the marching band was enormous. Oh, yeah. It made a lot of trips to I yeah. think, Japan I read yeah uh, it was it was right it was happening let's put it that way oh yeah yeah it was yeah Mr. Lucy built up quite the uh quite the band there mm-hmm. when, he, when he came on the scene mm-hmm. and yeah we well we went to state fair every year that I was in school um never won never won the states you know, there was always something that happened you mm-hmm. know and, and Especially one year we, you know, 
we were told we won, and I can't tell you which year this was. It was either 67 or 68. And a couple of the other people I know that would say the same thing. We were told we won, and then a half an hour later, they came and said, no, there was a scoring error. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the traditional one that, that won got mm. the, the trophy again. So and we competed against schools like Averling of Bath and mm-hmm. Holly and I forget who in the world else it was. Those are the two big ones that I can remember. Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, I always think, you know, fall, I think marching band. Mm-hmm. Um, I was also noticing that how many people do you think you graduated with approximately? Do you remember? Uh, graduating class was like 135. 135. And for 135, I mean, they had National Honor Society, Enzian, Pep Club, Coin Club, Drama Club, uh-huh. FFA, Future Farmers of America. I'm going to read them off. Future Teachers of America, Art Club, Chess Club, Health and Careers Club, Spanish, Latin, German Club, Library Club. I mean, I can go on and on. I mean, they're for, yeah. you know, a small class. It looked to me, looking back on it, there were quite a activities that you could become involved in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Hattorial Ski Club, Rifle Club, Varsity right. Club. Um, I, I don't know. It looked like a lot of good, clean fun there going on at Hilton mm-hmm. Central High School. Yep. yep. Um, tell us a little bit about what was the clothing trends like there in the 60s and 70s? <laughs> and did you adhere to any of those trends? No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Um, uh... I was kidded all through school, and, I, and, I, and the class will, um, there was something in there because I, I wore white socks. Okay. And nobody wore white socks. Okay. <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know it was, there was something about that, you know, the, you know, I forget exactly how it was. I would con- continue the trend of wearing white socks. Mm-hmm. I wore gray ones now, so that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> in terms of the classes that, that you did, was there... What were your strengths, or what what classes did you like? Recess <laughs> <laughs> and lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Study hall was good. Yeah, um, band was okay. You know, I mean, you know, I I was never a good musician, but you know, I liked it. You mm-hmm. know, and, uh, uh, what was I good in? Well, you don't have to be good. Maybe just enjoyed being in that class. Any teachers that, you know, stick in your head, like, you know, go to bed? The ones that stick in my head are the math teachers, because I was terrible at math. <laughs> you know, um, it was Mrs. Sillick, mm-hmm. who taught algebra, and she had me for four years to get through um, elementary algebra and intermediate algebra. Uh-huh. You know, that sort of shows you how bad I was. Uh-huh. And Mr. Williams did geometry. Uh, he was he was an interesting teacher because he, he's still around. Oh yeah. And the funny thing was, is a a few years ago, my uh, my best friend's uh, son texted me from school one day and he says, "Do you remember Mr. Williams?" Said, yeah. Uh, he taught geometry and he drove a '67 GTO. <laughs> and he says, "Yeah, he's my substitute teacher today." <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> so yeah, that was that was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. You know, Hey, he's still around. All right. Oh yeah, he was there when I went through school too. Yeah. Steve Williams, right? His yeah. first name Steve. Yeah. yeah. Did you like cars? You're you're a car fan, car fiend. Yeah. 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 I uh, at one time I had uh, two or three different performance cars. Mm-hmm. Um, I built a uh, a '69 Ford Ranchero. Okay. Um, it was a fun car to drive around. It kept breaking down because I wasn't as good as I thought I was at, <laughs> at that stuff. Even though I I was working as a mechanic at that time, you know, it was just, eh, it just didn't want to cooperate sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then I had a seventy one Torino Cobra, okay, four twenty nine. It was a, that was my big car, okay. Yeah. I don't know where it is now. You don't know where it is now? Huh? No, I, I sold it uh, a lot of years ago to a guy from East Bloomfield. Okay. 
Where it is now, I have no idea. Yeah. It needed work when I sold it to him, so. Never know, it might still be around somewhere. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it is. Yeah. Mechanic, where where did you work there? I worked at Sears. Okay. Here at Grease Ridge Center. Mm -hmm. And it fell into the job. Mm -hmm. Looking for something to do just part time after I, I, I'd been working as a salesman and selling appliances and found that I was a terrible salesman. Okay. Um, one of a couple of my friends worked at Sears and they said, "Hey, they're always looking for people for you know winter, you know, or the fall season to you know bust tires and all that." So I applied, got the job, um, and somehow or other stuck it out for. Almost thirty nine years. Thirty nine years. Thirty nine years. What was it like being a mechanic at Sears for that many years? I mean, that's a pretty general question, but do they treat you well and stuff like that? The pay was, yeah, the pay was okay. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing that that Sears had going for it, as far as that goes, was they had their profit sharing to start out with, and when I got working full time and got vested there I asked yes, one of the the old heads that was there I said, what what's the story on this and should I get into it? And he says, Yes, absolutely. And I'm glad I followed his advice because mm -hmm. it, uh, it's made a nice little nest egg. Good. And you said you retired in twenty seventeen, was it? Sixteen. Yeah, okay. Just, and just then... before Labor Day. Okay. Um what was Hilton like in those years that you were growing up, you know, from age six to age 18 and stuff? Age six, I hardly remember. Yeah. <laughs> whenever, like whenever, you know, like you have that when you start vividly remembering whether it's your high school years or middle school years, like what was, what was Hilton like? I mean, it's, I, I can look rural. at pictures. Very rural. Mm -hmm. Um, it still is now, but it's grown. It has grown up so much, you know. I'll, somebody will say, "Well, I live on this street," and it's like, "Where is that?" Mm -hmm. You know. And they'll tell you, "Oh, okay, that was so and so's farm." Mm -hmm. Uh, boy, growing up, lots of apple trees, mm -hmm. you know. And from the stories. There's like half of the apple trees when I was growing up that there was back in the 30s when my mom was growing up here. You know, it's 1934, there was a big freeze and and it killed off half. And it was one of those ones where it was like in the 40s and 50s mm -hmm. one day and then it, the temperature just fell. Mm -hmm. it went to like minus 20 or something like that. And the, the old timers too said that you could actually hear the trees explode because mm -hmm. the sap just froze and just mm -hmm. blew the trees apart. They lost like half the apple trees mm -hmm. were under. There was like 100,000 of them that just were gone. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's kind of interesting. I listen to Dave and Tom, you know, they're, they're talking, you know, they're talking about things that went on in the village right at the same time that I was growing up. It's like, I never knew about that. Right. You know, so there's like a dividing line from where you live that, you know, you would know different things about what was going on. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those interesting little things. That, mm -hmm. you know, hmm, okay. <laughs> uh, when I, I was doing a little bit of research about the 60s, you graduated in 69. Kind of a tumultuous time there with. President Kennedy and MLK and oh, yeah. I Have a Dream. Um, I know sometimes people say, well, do you remember where you were when this occurred? Some of those events, like, are there any things that you vividly remember from that decade of the 60s? Mm. Well, I remember when, when Kennedy got shot because I was homesick with the flu that day mm -hmm. and I just happened to have the TV on and which one of the Newscasters, you know, they so they broke in and you know, from the the whole video thing there from from Dallas, you know, mm -hmm. President Kennedy's been shot. I was like, whoa! I remember 
first I, I always you know you remember the moon landing mm-hmm. that was that was pretty neat um i don't remember what i was doing that day but mm-hmm. uh, i think the one thing that i i sort of remember my grandmother because she she was born in the late 1880s mm-hmm. or something like that you know so she, she went through from you know seeing the first flights and then seeing somebody landing on the moon, and she was like, kind of like, "Well, isn't that something?" Right. You know that kind of thing. Uh, I I also found out that first man on the moon that was in July, like '69, uh-huh. Apollo 11. Did you know that President Nixon made a trip through Hilton in 1971? No. Yeah, he. There's a picture in a book with with. Um, Mr. Skinner, I don't know if he was the supervisor or... Oh, probably L. Skinner. Yeah. yeah he was, and he, he, was there was, the, he was the county sheriff. Okay. Yeah. And there he there was his motorcade, and then you saw little kids with, with signs and everything. Oh. And of course, we know what happened with Watergate and everything, but right. yeah, he, he made his way through through Hilton, okay. yeah, which yeah. is pretty cool. Um, what, uh, what went in 71? What was it about? It, it said, you know, I got 1971 here. I don't want to say it was in August. I forget. I should have put the month. But hmm. Yeah, it's in one of the books. I got a book from Mike Wheelahan that uh, I was re- researching the other day. Oh, okay. um, yeah. and, and, of course, we had our first troops in Vietnam in 65. Right. Um, and then you went into the 70s. So um, what what more were, like, the businesses like in Hilton? I mean, you brought up the Apple business, right? I know that yeah. was big. Um, how else do you recall or do you remember our main street or our transportation and, oh, and what Hilton was like? Well, you know, the thing that I, I tell visitors now is we've got a whole display now in the, in the Stilson gallery on just exclusively the businesses of Hilton. Mm-hmm. Um, at one time there was four grocery stores. And and I joke with that because that's one of each, one of each religious denomination, <laughs> <laughs> um, which is fairly true, you know. Um, there's two hardware stores at uh, at that time, um, two dentists, at least two barber shops, mm-hmm. uh, three gas stations. Um, Ooh, a drugstore, of course, and a bank. You know, we had the State Bank of Hilton. Mm-hmm. You know, we thought that everybody probably thought that that was the greatest thing in the world. It's the State Bank of Hilton, one branch. <laughs> 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 well, actually, it was two after the, the fire in '65. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, well, I have, like 1970, they branched out over into North Greece. Um, let's see. What else was there? Do you have any restaurants and stuff? Hotels. Yeah. Well, there was the Arlington Hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't have been allowed in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, before the fire, there was there was the Pleasure Shop, which was a there there was two soda. Well, put it this way: there's two soda fountains. There was the Pleasure Shop and there was the Candy Kitchen. They were right across from each other mm-hmm. in, the, in the village, um, which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. The Pleasure Shop also sold magazines and comic books and things like that as well. Plus. I don't remember what else they had, but mm-hmm. it was that was always the, that's kind of an interesting one too. You got you know two soda fountains, one right across from each other. The candy kitchen was the one where the the high school kids all wanted to hang out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. was that Nick and Kula? Is it Nick and Kula? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was only in there a couple of times. I never got to go down to the village to the candy kitchen. A lot of my friends did because they were doing. Yeah, well, my, my best friend Mike, he worked at the IGA across the street, mm-hmm. you know, so the kids, when they get off, because he was a backer, they go over there and spend their money that they made working working for the IGA. Uh-huh. Let's see, what else was there? Well, of course, we had the uh, the GLF, which was uh, the feed store. Uh Tractor implement store. Lissos had uh, sold case tractors. So where Napa is now. Let's see. I want to go back. You said there were four grocery stores. Four grocery had, stores. Can you name them? And like you, you were, you were teasing about they handled different 
religious affiliations? Uh, well, there was the red and white. Mm -hmm. um, and I think right next to that was Herbs. And I don't remember whether he was affiliated with any specific one or not. Uh -huh. Across the street, there was Hart's grocery store at the corner of South Avenue in Maine. And that became the Sasson's uh, bakery mm -hmm. um, about the time of the fire. And then across the street somewhere, there was another one, and I don't remember where that was. And then later on, of course, there was the IGA that was the corner of East Avenue and Hovey Street, where the bank is now. Mm -hmm. You brought up the fire, and that is always, I yeah. teach third grade, and the kids just, are, when they hear about the fire, explain your remembrances of that that day and and how it affected I don't, everybody. I don't even remember how normally we first heard about it, but it was probably a phone call or something like that. And um, you know, on a Sunday, my mom was probably had probably gone to the nursing home to work, and that may be how we got the, the heads up on it. Was, <laughs> but uh, um, Dad took off and went up to the went to the village, and we didn't see him again until like eight o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. was, I think he was probably over at the Methodist Church, uh, you know, making coffee and sandwiches and stuff, and mm -hmm. handed it out to the firefighters. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think he ever even. I don't think I ever even asked what he was doing. Mm -hmm. you know, just like, yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's what you did, I guess. Right. So you got you got the museum. What what other attractions does Hilton have nowadays? Because I can think of a couple of things, it's like the Apple Festival. Yeah, um, Apple Festival is big. Um, they got the Main Street Car Show now, which has grown quite a bit. Oh. Well, oh, the carnival, I think I always like carnival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I mean, it's changed over the years. But. Oh, yeah, yeah. The the carnival was always interesting. Um, the, the funny part was that um, my folks would always figure out when my dad was going to take vacation from Kodak, and they would plan their vacation. We would get away the week of the carnival. Mm -hmm. So I hardly ever got to go to it. Uh, okay. You know, you know, we'd always go camping in the Adirondacks or okay. something like that. So do you interact to camp as a family and stuff? Yeah. yeah. You know, got a 16-foot travel trailer that was not big enough, mm -hmm. but, you know, it was what you had. You know. Did you do any fishing up there? Yeah. You know, we, I remember one time we went to, uh, I think we were at Moffat Beach, but you know, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but. We were fishing, and uh, my little sister Mary Ann, she got started catching sunfish, mm -hmm. and it was like you know fishing off the dock, and she just keep bringing them in, bringing them in, bringing them in, probably way undersized or something like mm -hmm. that. But yeah, yeah, we we fished. Um, I went hiking one time with another guy up there, and I forget which one of the. Uh, parks it was where we were at, but got lost for about two hours or more. You know, I heard about it afterwards, <laughs> and I heard about it from my folks for the next fifty years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, what are some of your hobbies or interests that you do now? I mean, I know you enjoy the being the curator at the museum but if you're if you wanted to relax what does ken freeman do uh i build models okay i build um this that's part of how i got into the historical society gig is is um i built i'm i'm interested in model railroads now i started out when i was a kid i built model cars mm -hmm. then i built model airplanes for a while and then I went back to model cars, and then I got into radio-controlled airplanes, and, you know, I like building the things. And again, it's one of those things that I like building them, but it was terrible to fly. Okay. You know, I, could, I, could, I could stooge it around the sky, but uh, taking off and landing were a challenge. Yeah. You know, I learned how to fix them really quick. 
did you? <laughs> After they crashed? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But then uh, a couple of my friends got me into you know, the same ones that were also into flying. They got me into model railroading. So. Mm-hmm. And I like just building models more than even running trains around or anything like that. Right now I'm working on building replicas of some of the buildings from the village. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I finished up a uh, a train station that uh, it looks, uh, if you stand back about 50 feet, it looks sort of like the uh, the train station from uh, from Hilton. Right. Uh, it, well, it's actually, it's, it's pretty close. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty close. And I finished that up last year. I'm starting to work now on one that uh, when it gets through, it's going to look pretty much like Z's. Okay. Uh, it's got that same roof line and everything like that. So that'll that'll be fun. That'll be a, an interesting one. I mean, take me into like how does that start? How does that project start, begin? Do you just do a scale drawing or you know supplies? How do you go about and doing that? Research what you're 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 going to build and then see if you can find a kit so that you can just build the kit. Mm-hmm. And that that's how the train station worked out. Mm-hmm. Is I I found one that I got comparing what the kit looked like to what I know from the photograph the few photographs that we have of the of the train station mm-hmm. and it's a, you know, it's not perfect but it'll work you know and and, and so it, it's worked out god that sounds neat yeah and I, I tried to make a diorama of the whole thing from a based on a couple of pictures I had from uh big snowstorm of 77 mm-hmm. and uh, you know, there was a picture it's over in the museum now of uh, they had a snow plow come through and the snow and I started doing the measuring on it and the snow was at the top of the uh, snow plow mm-hmm. and this is one of the big old Russell snow plows and I figured, I figured out what the height on that it was like 13 foot high snow banks incredible yeah. well that's like whoa, you know, that, and that was a heck of a snowstorm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I was I was working in Victor at the time, and it took me three days before I could get home. No kidding. Yeah. No kidding. Wow. Oh. I stayed with a friend of mine up in Spencerport until we, yeah, you because know, all the all like the the dip up here by the museum, that that whole uh, spot there where that creek runs through. Filled completely full of snow. Mm-hmm. Um, the story that they tell us is they brought a uh, snowblower from the airport mm-hmm. over here to clear that out. They had a couple of workers with metal poles. They'd sit there. The snowblower would come in with it in there a little bit, chew away at it. And then they'd sit there and they'd probe to try and find cars that were in there. And then they'd take another bite in and come back out again. No kidding. How long did it take them to clear that area? A couple of days. A couple of days. At least a couple of days. It's crazy. <laughs> um, who do you think has been the most influential person in your life? <laughs> in some ways, I would say my mom. Mm-hmm. You know, she was a she was a really cool person. Mm-hmm. You know, she. You know, it's one of those things that later on, especially you know, after after my dad died, I, I was there a lot, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, and uh, she was she was a lot of fun to hang out with. Mm-hmm. You know, she she could tell a good story, <laughs> you know, or at least get a give a good quip afterwards. Yeah, you know? was she a good cook? You said she. Yeah, nah. you know, she was she was a tomboy. No, she was a top boy. Yeah, she liked playing baseball more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's some great little stories with her. That, you know, my my sister tells us one, and she, I never heard it myself. But uh, it's one of those things that she liked her farm animals, and she was in 4-H and and that and that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and of course, she went to the Parma Union Number One, which is right around the corner from from their house. And the, of course, the school teacher would ring the bell, you know, and my grandmother would yell at her, Margie, time to go to school. You know, 
Then you hear the second bell, and now oh, it's really time to go. <laughs> and mom couldn't mom couldn't run cross lots right. over to the school, which right. would have been like you know you're right there. You're right there. You had to run down to the corner and then down to the, down to the school. You know, mm-hmm. so you know that was yeah, that's one of those funny ones. The, uh, the the one that and it, this is another one of those things, and the the one about the that. These are the stories I love to tell people when they're when, when they're at the museum. The other good one was is I was talking to her one day, and it's my grandfather ran the farm there, and he said, "So what did Grandpa grow?" And she goes, "Mostly rocks." <laughs> <laughs> and you you live here, so you're right in the same area, so you know, you mm-hmm. know, if, if you don't find a rock around Parma Center, then you're not trying hard. Right. Enough. Right. right. <laughs> Any qualities you take from your mom? You could say I got that from, say Margie. Was her Margie? Margie. Margie. Her name. Her name was Margaret. But grandma called her Margie. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody else. Everybody else called her Aunt Peg. Okay. I don't know why. Yeah. But uh, maybe your sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can. I think you got a good sense of humor. Buddy. You think that got you got that from mom? Some of it. Yeah. 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 Well, my dad had a good sense of humor too. Yeah. He he loved hearing a good joke, but he couldn't tell him from it because he knows he'd always have to try and sanitize something. You know? Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, he he liked a good story, and I think I got my my storytelling ability from him. Okay, or at least I like to think so. Nice. If you could go back and you could have dinner with anybody in history, who would it be? Could be a relative. It could be a historical figure. Oh wow! You name it. Oh my gosh, I thought about that one day. Hmm. There's a few that would be kind of interesting. Ben Franklin comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Um, if I could get into uh, the uh, Back to the Future DeLorean, maybe just go back and visit with the relatives from here. You know, from the 1830s, you know, right. just you know, pop into the because my great 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 grandfather Knox uh, owned the general store down here at the corner. Just mm-hmm. walk in and you know, should to be wearing the right kind of clothes because otherwise you, yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh really? Well, I mean, you know, if I if you walked in with a pair of jeans and a uh, shirt on like I got today, you would stand out as like underdressed. Ah. Uh, Differently dressed, okay. Not underdressed, just mm-hmm. differently dressed. Um, it's kind of like when Michael J. Fox and Back to the Future, mm-hmm. you know, because he's wearing the the vest, you know, and everybody thought it was a a life jacket. Mm-hmm. You know? so, but it would be interesting to go back and just see what they were doing for mm-hmm. a day or two, you know? and just tell them that you know, passing through, heading to Ohio or wherever, mm-hmm. you know, and I just. Thought I'd stop and see what was happening here. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Anything on a bucket list for you, or you you feel content and you got your uh as far as activities I'd like to do, well, I'd like to go back to we we went camping at Yellowstone one year when I was growing up. I was probably about thirteen years mm-hmm. old at the time. I'd like to go back to Yellowstone. Um. I started writing a list of that one time. Um, I'd like to drive a tank. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be kind of cool. not in battle though. Just driving. no, just okay. yeah. There, there's a there was a company. I think they're still in business now in uh, Minnesota or Wisconsin somewhere yeah. up there that had a thing. that was called and it was called strangely enough, drive a tank. Mm-hmm. You know, and you let you run the thing around a third course and you know, pay extra to crush a car. You know, like, you know, I think it'd be kind of cool. Sure. Yeah. Why not? What guy doesn't want to crush a car? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Drive a tank over a car. <laughs> yeah. 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 On my podcast, I I ask people what do you, what makes Hilton unique. I mean, I know it's changed over the years, but <clears throat> you've lived here your entire life. What what makes us special? Uh, that it's still a small town. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend Jim says that because he grew up in Vermont and it was 
uh, let's see, where did he grow up? Rutland, I think it was, or something like that. And it's a fairly big town. Mm -hmm. And he lives now over on Manitou Road. And he, and he always jokes about that he'd walk or he'd go somewhere and see somebody in the, in the village and go, oh, I saw this guy. I was, you know, yeah, I know him. I know him. I know him. I know him. You know, and he'd just kind of shake and go, boy, this is a small town. Right. Yeah. You know, but it is. It's even for as big as we are now, it, it's still got a good small town flavor to it. I agree. Um, I ask, and I don't know if you can get three three words to describe Hilton. I mean, you said small town flavor, but if you could encapsulate it in one or two words, what would it be? We're just about done here, I promise. Uh. Quaint, mm -hmm. maybe I don't know. It's definitely changed over the years, um, you know, and it's kind of sad to see because you know, at one time, you know, like I say, you know, you had two hardware stores. You didn't have to run to Greece to Lowe's to, mm -hmm. to buy a bucket of paint. You go mm -hmm. down to Shorty Stoddard's mm -hmm. and get the paint there. You know, um. I don't really go into the village all that much anymore, so mm -hmm. it's 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 kind of hard to really put a definition on it. Right. You know? Right. You know, when I when I come over to the museum, I don't even I don't even drive through the village. Mm -hmm. But like I say, it's it's still got a good small town flavor yeah. to it. Yeah. It may not be to where everybody knows your name, but right. you know, uh, but. You know, if you get in trouble, they're gonna, they're going to find out about it pretty quick. You know, <laughs> right. it'll, it'll be around. Of course, right. social media does some of that. For you. It sure does. Are you on social media? Just on Facebook. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't care for any of the other ones. Mm -hmm. it's, it's boring. <laughs> anything I anything I didn't ask you that you want to bring across? No, no, not that I can think of. Uh, other than, you know, I got to put in my plug for the museum. Absolutely. Go yeah. ahead. We're open now, Sundays from 2 to 4 p.m., uh, except for the major holidays. We won't be open for Mother's Day and all the uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and, and the major holidays. We won't be open for that. And we'll be open through Thanksgiving. We've got a lot of stuff for people to see. Um, the focus is more or less on what life was like back in the day mm -hmm. and i'm trying to move the back in the day up to the 50s now mm -hmm. you know, just so that you know is you know. do you have a favorite part of the museum a favorite display or it's hard to put a thumb on it uh, it's the one that i'm working on at the time that's my favorite <laughs> you know. good answer uh, yeah but you know it's i've, I've made it change a lot mm -hmm. and the seven years now that I've been there, or almost seven. Um, and it's the little story that uh, sticks in my mind all the time about it. When I, when I first was asked to come here, I, I emailed a friend of mine and told him about it. He's like, oh, that's pretty cool. And uh, he was from, he was living in Virgin at one time and then moved to Thousand Islands, but uh, uh, not long after I started there, I, I found a website for another museum, and uh, I won't say who because I don't want to throw him under the bus. But mm -hmm. I sent him the link to it because it was one where he, I thought maybe he would be interested in, and he replied back that he looked at the pictures for this. And he and his dad had been there. He, said probably 10 or 15 years before that and it looked like it had never changed from that mm -hmm. and to me that's not the way a museum needs to be it mm -hmm. needs to constantly be evolving you know to, you know keep people so they'll come back and see different things mm -hmm. and i don't i don't want to hear somebody say that oh i was here three years ago and everything looks exactly the same you know that you know that means i haven't done what i should be doing right That's the that's the big challenge, you know. There's a lot of other things that I want to do there. I just 
sometimes just don't have the time to get it done with. You know? And <laughs> I'll start working on one display and then I'll lose focus. And, oh, look, I got to, you know, it's like squirrel, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, uh, but yeah, you know, it's all it's all interconnected, you know, the the various parts, and and that's the idea is just also to get the flow so that people get an idea of what things were like here in the village or any village. You know, some of it's kind of generic, and others it focuses a lot closer on the on the town mm-hmm. and the hill and the village, you know. And we just got the big wood Arlington restaurant sign from off the the new Arlington. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hard to believe that because that was '69, um, and that started the whole thing with redoing the, the wall and the gallery so that it all reflects the businesses of the village. You know, we even had a bowling alley at one time. <laughs> A bowling alley and a movie theater. Well, actually, well, we've still got a bowling alley, don't we? We have yeah. pleasure lanes, but yeah. what was the old time bowling alley? Um, it was four lanes, I believe. And it was building. The, it's not there anymore, but it was right next to Z's mm-hmm. on the on the west side of there. Um, it started out. It was a movie theater until the fifties, uh, and then they closed down the movie theater and turned it into a bowling alley. My brother, my brother in law, was actually a pin setter there for. When he was in high school, there when they dropped the things down and they manually had to. Yeah, he did it all manually. Manual. Try to get him to write down his his stories of his adventures of being a pin setter, but he hasn't done it. And done it. Yeah. 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 That's that's the other thing is is you know we we try to get the the older people. Well, you're doing it too with mm-hmm. the, with the podcast. You know, get people to. Tell the stories of, of what it was like when, when they were growing up. Mm-hmm. You know? While the memories are still relatively fresh. Right. And I, I do. I welcome anybody that wants to come on. I mean, I've been plucking away people that I know are involved in the fray, but I, I'm willing and able to get all of this, this yeah. down. You know, you got documentation and history and Dave Crumb has so much in his mind. Oh yeah, that yeah. you just you want to get it all out, yeah. so you can preserve it yeah. digitally. And I know John Foster is really into that. Yeah, Tommy as well. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Tom, Tom, Berger. Tom Berger. Oh my word! You know, if you ever want to know the family history of mm-hmm. any family in this town, you'll know. It. Well, I been trying to tie him down. He's he's been out of town here, then he's out of town there. <laughs> but he's he's very nice. He's always a guy yeah. I love to be on. I'm going to be in town after such and such a date. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm looking yeah. forward to that, and I know yeah. he. He, uh, Dave Crum is uh, at the community center on Wednesday nights. I think. Right. Yeah. From seven to nine, is that? Somewhere in there, I guess. Yeah. You know, I haven't been down there quite a while. I mean, he always talks about they have a, a round table discussion yeah. there, and they yeah. the boys get there and they yeah they he's rehash got, old stories. He's, he's got his he's got his regular stuff. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, Ken, it's really been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Um, there's a lot of things I learned from you that I think we could even branch off into more discussion about. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of having you here, uh, this has been, you know, Mike Heist with, with Ken Freeman, the curator of the Parma Museum, uh, kibitzing with Ken. Uh, Ken, <laughs> uh, you can sign off any way you want, but otherwise, I that's pretty much where I'm yeah. coming from. Well, if you, if you think of other questions, you know, you know, you know where I am. I know, know where you are because I could basically throw a rock to it. So. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like, okay, where does he live? And it's like, yeah. by the way, how old is this house? I believe it's 1929. It was built, okay. and okay. Um, I forget the people that had it before us, but then the Baird family had it before we did, and so yeah, 1929. Really. Yeah. I mean, if you go 20 feet that way, you're going to run into a cellar that, oh, it's kind of scary, but uh, yeah, it, all, it's an old, old rubble stone. Yeah, yep. yeah all rubble stone. Yeah. Uh, but it's been a nice homestead for us for about 18 years. So. Yeah. My great uncle in 1938, he's the, great, the greatest name for a, a kid and, and probably sailed him in, in the wrong way. But my, my great uncle, his name is Isaac Newton Odell. <laughs> 
yeah. yeah. Uh, but we always called him Uncle Newt. Mm-hmm. And, but he was a photographer. Mm-hmm. And he worked for Defender Chemical, which is like a competitor of Codex. Um, he was a, an amateur photographer. 1938, he walked around here with my other great uncle, Bird. And they, uh, he took pictures of a lot of the houses from around Parma Center. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure whether he took a picture of this one or not. Yeah. But it's like, that would be somebody else I want to go back and say, no, take a picture of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could go to dinner with that person. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember him. All right. You know, he, was, he was, you know, he was still alive when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he looked over at Cobb Hill when I was, mm-hmm. when I was a kid. Wait, the house it was like a Tudor house. Dave tells us, uh, I don't remember exactly when this was, but he went to an estate sale at that house. So I've got a couple of pictures. He, he apparently was a good gardener. With the, the gardening genes grew well in the Odell family, and uh, knew apparently was, was pretty good with flower gardens. Mm-hmm. Well, you've been pretty good bringing history to us, so. Keep up the good work over there at the Town Hall, Parma Museum, and uh, you're welcome anytime here on the Big H Podcast. Well, thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you.